With the success of Super Mario Bros. 1 and 2, there was no doubt in anyone's mind that the franchise would continue. The next entry, Super Mario Bros. 3, was released in Japan in 1988, North America in 1990, and in Europe in 91. The delay had something to do with a shortage of ROM chips and having to put together a different version of Super Mario Bros. 2 outside of Japan, which was the one reformatted from Doki Doki Panic. But the game was promised to be the biggest and most exciting Mario game at the time. It said so right on the freaking box. Does it live up to its guarantee? Well, it sure as hell is the biggest game. With eight worlds and several stages in each, making a grand total of 91 levels, it's basically the first two Mario games combined and then injected with steroids. The game borrows from the formula of the original Mario much more than the second, with the coin collecting, stomping of enemies, shooting fireballs, and the roster of all the old enemies, including Bowser. There's also a plethora of additions. Where the hell do I even begin? The Mushroom, Fire Flower, and Invincibility Star are all there with their original powers, but there's several more power-ups. The most frequent would be the Leaf, which would turn Mario into a raccoon. From here you can swat at enemies and coin boxes and shit with your tail, as well as glide to the ground by swinging your tail, and flying for a short time by getting a running start and filling up your pee meter, which is at the bottom of the screen. Much like the flower, the leaf will only become available if you're Super Mario. These power-ups will show up in the blocks that ordinarily store mushrooms. For the walkthrough, I'll refer to each of these blocks as mushroom or leaf block, so you may see some examples of me saying it's a leaf block while I'm grabbing a mushroom in the footage and vice versa. It all depends on what size you are at the time. If it's a flower box, I'll only refer to it as such. There are other power-ups in the game too, but I'll explain them later. First, the basic gist of it all. Princess Toadstool has asked Mario to help her once again, and for those that have asked why I've called her Toadstool instead of Peach in past videos, look, it says it right there. Anyway, she's asked Mario to help her once again by traveling to the seven worlds where each king has had their magic wand stolen and have been transformed to animals. So it's up to Mario and Luigi to travel to each world and retrieve each king's respective wand to them from each of Bowser's seven children, called the Koopalings. Each world has a map screen where you navigate from stage to stage, or you can access some bonus shit. Like the match game, where you have to line up three tiles by pressing B at the right time. A successful mushroom will give you two extra lives, a flower will give you three, and a star will give you five. There are also mushroom houses where three chests sit. One of the three items will be added to your inventory randomly. And that's another thing. From the map screen, you can press A to access your inventory and power up prior to entering a stage. Another way to add items to the inventory is the memory game that will pop up after reaching 80,000 points and beating the level you're on. You flip two cards at a time and try to match them up. For each pair you get correctly, that item will be awarded to you. But after two mismatches, the game ends. Another handy little tool is the P-Switch which upon hitting will transform all the brick blocks in the stage into coins for a short period of time, so collect as many as you can before it switches back. Another way to earn extra lives comes at the end of each stage. You'll get a card as you hit the tile in the air as you complete the level, while three icons shuffle randomly between a mushroom, flower, or a star. Whichever icon is flashing at the time that you hit it will be the card that you collect. After collecting three total, you'll get a 1-up if they don't all match, but three mushrooms will give you two extra lives, three flowers give you three, and three stars give you five. There's also a two-player mode, much like in Mario 1 where player 1 is Mario and player 2 is Luigi, but this time it's co-op in the sense that you alternate, but you're still both working on completing the same game, whereas in Mario 1, each player would go through their own individual game. And by selecting the marked spot where the other player is on the map instead of the next stage, it'll take you to a mini-game remake of the original Mario Bros. game. So that's the long and the short of the game's features. Now how well does it play? Well, anyone who's ever picked up a controller to play this probably agrees that it's just fucking addictive. The controls are about as smooth and fluid as any game on the NES, the hit detection is just right, there's plenty of challenge to be had as the game progresses without being overly frustrating, the graphics and animation are colorful and well defined, and even though there are a shitload of levels, it doesn't get repetitive because each world has a different theme. 
so there are a variety of environments, not to mention that the levels are just plain well designed, with several unique stages. Plus you don't have to go through every single stage, there are a few forks in the road. Aside from all the enemies in the first game that make their return, there's also a bunch of new ones, many of which were more than unique and interesting enough to be featured in future games in the Mario series as well. The soundtrack has some pretty good tunes. A minor gripe, I guess, would be the fact that you hear a lot of the same songs because there are just so many goddamn levels. There are two songs for the overworld stages, one for the underground and various other indoor stages, one for the fortresses, and one for the airship stages at the end of each world. So that's five stage themes and 91 levels. So yeah, there's some repetition there, but it's forgivable. There's only one issue I do have with the game, and that is the fact that there's no save option or password system. The game is fucking jimungus. You'd be hard pressed to finish this all in one sitting. Yeah, there are warp zones, but that's a lame way to pick up where you left off. Plus at the time that the game was released, if you didn't have Nintendo power to know where they were, then you wouldn't be able to. Or if you just wanted to beat the game legit, then you'd have to leave the game running overnight or whatever. You can continue on the world you left off on after getting a game over, and you have infinite continues, so the game at least cuts you some slack there. So let's start off at the first world, the grass world. At the beginning of the first stage, there's a mushroom in the block over here to the right. Get it, and then kick this turtle shell into the block on the ground to get a leaf. Kill the Goombas, including a red-winged one here called the Paragoomba just kind of hops around, and then get a running start and fly up to the clouds for a 1-up and some coins. Get another running start so you can fly over most of the level and go down this pipe for some more coins. You'll pop back up to the right at the end of the stage, but before you go there, head back a bit, kick the turtle shell, and you'll find a P-switch. Hit it and grab another bunch of coins. If you don't take the shortcut above, you're not missing much, just another mushroom box and some piranha plants and such. Early on in stage 2, you can use the hills as a slide to knock off Goombas on the way down, an ability you can utilize in many other parts of the game. There's a mushroom box at the bottom of the first hill, and then bump this block to get a P-switch. Use the blocks up here to head down the pipe and get some coins. There's also a hidden one up over this pipe. These music note blocks are bouncy and can give you some added height if you propel off them. The second one here is a mushroom block, and the third one here contains an invincibility star that can carry you through the rest of the way to the end. Right before the end, you'll notice a yellow Paragoomba. Unlike their red counterparts, these guys fly overhead and drop micro Goombas down at you. If you get caught by one of these, you'll be grounded for a short period of time. From here, you have two options. Well, three, really. You can go to stage three or four to get to the mushroom house, or you can bypass it altogether and go straight for the fortress. There's a match game right before it as well. In stage 3, knock the Koopa Troopa out and use its shell to kill off the Boomerang Brother. That's right, the Hammer Brothers have returned, and there are several forms, including the traditional Hammer Brothers. In this case, the Boomerang Brothers will chuck, as you might expect, boomerangs at you. If you must fight them without weapons, stay low to avoid its initial attack and quickly jump on him before he throws the next one, or simply jump over him and run off. Knock this turtle shell down this way to clear some space, and you'll find a hidden music note block that'll send you up into the clouds for a coin bonus, and the pipe takes you down to the very end of the level. If you choose not to take the bonus, there's just a few red paragoombas, a boomerang brother, and odds and ends before you get to the finish line. A warp zone can be acquired here by standing on this white platform and holding down. After a few seconds, you'll drop behind the background and can run to the end of the stage to get the whistle that'll bring you to the next set of worlds you can choose to warp to. You do have a limited amount of time here, though, before slipping back into the foreground. Stage 4 is an auto-scroller. It's really not much more than block platforms along with some of the dropping platforms that float by and fall once you land on them. Be patient, you don't want to get too far ahead of the action. Let the platforms come to you so you can see what's in front of you and time your jumps accordingly. You'll benefit greatly from having a mushroom so you can bust your way through the blocks as another means of getting to higher ground, and if you're Raccoon Mario, you can swipe at some of the blocks you ordinarily couldn't. There's a 1-up mushroom here, a regular mushroom here, and another 1-up shroom over here. The biggest obstacle is the huge pit below. There aren't many enemies at the stage at all, just a Koopa Trooper here and there and a Paratrooper. The mushroom house between stages 3 and 4 has a mushroom, flower, or a leaf. Next up is the fortress. Wait for the balls of lava to spurt out before jumping, and grab a fire flower here if you're already big. These balls of energy that look like stridex pads will float in a circle around the sphere in the ceiling and floors. Careful walking between them. 
If you're Raccoon Mario, you can get a running start here, time it so you don't hit the Stridex pads, and fly up and over the top of the ceiling. When you get to the end, press up to go through a door you can't see, and you'll get a warp zone whistle and be done with the stage right then and there. The traditional road will lead you to a door soon after the first Dry Bones of the game. Dry Bones is a Koopa Troopa skeleton that falls apart when you jump on it, but will always put himself back together, and fireballs won't work on him. After going through the door, you'll encounter a ceiling of spikes that descends. Quickly move to the open space and let it drop. As it ascends back up, move on and then hide in the little space at the very end. And when it raises back up, go through the door and face off with Boom Boom, a recurring boss in all of the fortress levels of each world. Jump on him three times, just make sure to retreat after each shot. He'll unleash his spikes for a brief moment the first two times you squash him. His pattern changes a bit after each time you stomp him. First he'll just run back and forth slowly, then he'll jump around the room, and then he'll run back and forth again, only faster this time. Even easier than stomping him is pumping fireballs down his throat, you'll dispose of him much faster. Afterwards Mario blows the fortress to the ground, and the blockade that was in your way earlier is unlocked. So if you get a game over and have to start at the beginning, you can take a shortcut to the second half of the world, which is a recurring theme in later worlds as well. So even though there's no save feature, at least the game has the decency to throw you a friggin' bone here. You'll start out stage 5 automatically sliding downhill and taking out a bunch of buzzy beetles. After this piranha plant is a fork in the road. Take the top route and bump the invisible music note block to spring yourself up for a coin bonus. When you come back down, you're basically at the end. Just watch out for the fireballs the piranha plant spit at you and you're done. If you take the scenic route, you'll just meet a few Koopa Troopers, grab a flower block, and the end is right there anyway. It's really a short level. Stage 6 requires a lot of jumping. Knock the turtle shell into his buddy down here and get the mushroom block. Then send the Koopa Trooper down here for a ride and move out of the way. These two blocks here can give you some coins if you have the tail to whack them, or if you're small and can fit underneath, and there's a one-up mushroom up here. Hop up here and slide down to board the moving platform. When it gets to the end of the wire, jump off, hop across a couple other platforms, and you're at the end. There's also a bunch of coins up here if you get a running start and fly up. By this point, you'll probably be battling the first Hammer Brother. These guys patrol the map and move around a bit each time you beat a level, so their locations fluctuate. So you may battle them at different points than when I'm battling them in this walkthrough. This particular Hammer Brother is similar to the traditional ones in the first game, only there's just one Hammer Brother and one set of blocks. Just run under him and knock him on his ass. Each time you defeat a Hammer Brother or a set of Hammer Brothers, you'll get an item to add to your inventory, in this case an Invincibility Star. There's also a Mushroom House here where you can get a Mushroom, Flower, or a Leaf. Final stop of World 1 is the castle at the end where someone has been screaming for help all this time. The king of this world has had his magic wand stolen and was transformed into a dog. So it's on to the airship stage to retrieve the wand. The cannonballs fire off slowly in a diagonal direction. Jump on them. Wait for the bullet bills to sail over you before making you move. Just watch out for the cannons on the ceiling and grab a flower from this block if you can. Just watch out for the cannon that quickly fires shots downward and vertical, diagonal and horizontal shots alternately. Shortly after this is the pipe that leads you into the ship where you'll battle Larry Koopa. You'll need to jump on him three times, and after each shot, he'll spin out in his turtle shell and hop across the room. Keep away from him at this point, cause he's not only immune to damage, but contact with him will hurt you. You can also pump him full of fireballs, ten shots will do him in. His attacks are very basic, he'll just fire a projectile out of his wand and run around the room, shouldn't be a problem at all. After defeating Larry, you'll get the wand, transform the king back to normal, and get a letter from Princess Toadstool, who advises you to watch out for ghosts. They'll chase you when you turn away from them, and she gives you a P-Wing to add to your inventory, which will give you infinite flying ability as long as you don't get hit. Now on to World 2. In what is becoming a Super Mario tradition at this point, World 2 is a desert. In Stage 1, there'll be a bunch of blocks, but some of them are inhabited by a micro Goomba and will lunge at you. Watch for them to move a bit before attacking, and keep your eyes peeled for the ones that don't flash to tell which ones are bullshit ahead of time, and jump on them. There's a mushroom block here, and an invincibility star here, which will help you plow through this chain of flames, which normally can be an annoyance chasing you around. You can also take them out with the tail, but if you don't have it, you'll be running away from them the whole time. Get a running start on this pipe and fly up through these blocks and down the pipe for a P-switch and some hidden coins. 
you'll come back out just a bit beyond where you came from. As long as you're not small Mario, you can break through these blocks and get in between these pipes for some coins, plus a 1-up mushroom in here. Just watch out for the flame chain. If you get stuck down here as small Mario, hit the hidden music note block here to get back up. Right before the end is a couple pipes with a bunch of blocks in between. Go down the right one to hit a P-switch and then come up the other one to grab all the coins. Just watch out for the block that attacks you. A little trick here is to go back down, hit the switch again, and all the blocks respawn so you can keep grabbing bonus coins over and over again until the timer is getting close to running out. Then head for the finish line. There's a match game you can play here, and then it's on to stage 2. Jump over the quicksand so you don't get stuck down here with the piranha plants, bump this mushroom block here, and ride this moving platform over the water. Knock this block for a P-switch, and continue riding the platform for some coins and a hidden 1-up mushroom. Kill the paratrooper, and you're at the end, a really short level. If you fall off the platform, the swimming isn't so bad, it's just really tight, so it's basically a sneaking mission. You have to wait for the openings when the cheap cheeps move away, and you can swim past them. Next up is the fortress. Stomp all the dry bones, and then when you get to this guy called the Thwomp, get close, but don't get under him. Wait for him to drop, and as he slowly ascends, then pass. Then there are the ghosts the princess warned you about. If you face them, they'll just float there, but once you turn your back, they're after you, so try to move at a relatively fast pace to keep away from them. Stop yourself as you jump over the spikes and let the thwomp down, and there's a mushroom block here if you're small enough to fit under it. I don't recommend sliding under it as regular Mario. And if you swat at it with the tail, who cares, you're already Raccoon Mario. Get a running start to get by all these thwomps. You don't really want to be waiting for each of them to individually drop. It takes longer and it's actually more dangerous. Let the spikes descend and run underneath when they come up, stopping in between to let them drop again. Make sure you're facing the ghost during these breaks, and if there's one on each side, just keep shifting back and forth quickly, they won't follow you. You'll enter a door and battle Boom Boom. He attacks the same way, squash him three times for the kill. So that blows up the barricade, and you can now take this pipe to the one over here if you get a game over. You can also get to this mushroom house now, which awards you with a mushroom, flower, or a leaf. So now back out here to stage 3. Use the shell from this Koopa Trooper to wipe out the flame chain. There's a mushroom block here, but you can only get it by breaking away the barricade underneath. So if you're small, you'll have to use the shell on the block. There's a star up here on this block. Plow through everything in your way, and there's another mushroom block up here. The block pyramids here have some of the phony blocks that lunge out at you. One at the top of the first one, one on this floating block, and two more right here before the end where you'll have to kick the turtle shell and get the hell back up here and let the shell clear the path for you to the pipe to the finish line. There's also a nice hidden P-switch up here. If you follow the hidden music notes here on the second block pyramid, it'll turn all those blocks down there into coins, which is a lot by the way. There's also a hidden one up here in the first pyramid you can get to with the shell. The unnumbered quicksand stage is next, and this is one where you'll want to equip the P-wing the princess gave you. The first part of the level has a few quicksand pits with piranha plants that spit fire. You want to jump over the pits completely so you don't get stuck in that shit. And then you'll encounter this tornado. Get a running start and jump into it, pressing the B button again as you hit it to let your momentum take you through it. Now see that angry sun that's been sitting up there in the corner all this time? He's going to attack you now. He'll spin around a few times and then swoop down. Run, but not too fast. Keep an eye on the paratroopers in front of you. The sun will pause for a moment before swooping down. Jump over it as it does this. After a little while of this ship, you're at the end. Now, that's how you beat the level if you don't use the P-Wing. If you do, just fly over the whole damn thing. Or if you think this level is easy enough, you can always save the P-Wing for a later level of your choosing. There's a mushroom house here, which also gives you a mushroom flower or a leaf. Now you only have to beat one of the next two stages. Decide which one you'd rather take on, or you can always just go through them both. I find four a little easier. If you have a raccoon tail, get a running start and fly up to the corner and crash through all the blocks. You'll get a bunch of bonus coins and a P-switch under the water here. It's most effective if you leave all the other blocks intact so you can snatch more coins. There's another one up here, again more effective if you leave the other blocks intact. Right after that is the end, but if you stay on the lower path, use this turtle shell to kick the block and get a mushroom. Just jump on it right as you hit it or it'll fall into the pit. There are a pair of boomerang brothers ahead. One of them is right in front of a mushroom block on the ground. Kick this paratrooper shell into it. Right after the second boomerang brother is a third mushroom block. Just watch the piranha plants fireballs stuck in the corner here. 
Right after the third boomerang brother is the end. Just watch out for the fourth of these little bastards at the finish line. Stage 5 introduces you to these chompers. They're chained to blocks, but they're aggressive and dangerous. They'll lunge out in whatever direction you're in. Jump just as they're about to fall back down to quickly get by them. You can always start the stage off with a startup, just plow right through them if you have a hard time with it. Fireballs don't do shit to it. There's a mushroom block on the ground down here. Use the turtle shell to break it open. Just watch out for the chomper on the left. You may want to approach this whole thing from the right side. Kick the shell down this way to get a hidden vine that takes you up here for some coins and a pipe that leads to a P-switch, which you'll need to be big to break the blocks apart to get to. You'll pop out up here. Hit the mushroom block here and you're right at the end. Just watch the chomper. If you don't go up the vine, you're not missing anything, just a couple Koopa Troopas. There's a match game down here, and around this time you'll probably battle the Hammer Brothers. Both are boomerang brothers that sit atop this platform. Stand down here, wait for them to throw, and jump on them, or pump them full of fireballs if you have them. One of them gives you a music box, which will put Hammer Brothers to sleep on the map screen, and the other gives you a hammer, which can break down rocks. There's a rock over here, but there's no real need to break it down unless you're afraid of getting a game over and want to clear a path and skip a couple levels for later on. Or you could break this one up here in the corner, which leads to a hidden area on the map. First, there's a mushroom house. Any of the chests will give you a frog suit. The Hammer Brothers consist of a pair of fireball spitters. It can be a pain to jump over their fireballs and bump them on the head. Using an invincibility star will wipe them out easily, and you'll get a warp whistle out of the deal. Before you get to the castle, you have a pyramid stage to deal with. It's much quicker to get through if you're Raccoon Mario. There's a mushroom block right off the bat over here. Knock the Buzzy Beetle on his ass first, and you'll notice the first block wall in front of you. There are several of these. If you have a tail, swipe them away and walk through easily. If you don't, you'll have to kick these beetle shells into them, which is why it's easier to go into this as Raccoon Mario. Go through the second floor barricade, then left up here, follow the linear path, and knock the hidden block up here to make your way into a bonus segment with a P-Switch and a bunch of coins. You'll pop up almost immediately after where you came in, and after one more block wall is a pipe leading to the end. Just watch out for the boomerang brother. So now it's on to the castle. This king has been transformed into a spider, so now it's on to the airship stage. Watch out for the bullet bills as the screen shifts vertically and alters the direction of the bullets. Duck down under them. Stand atop these crates, let the bullets pass by, then run under, wait for the next two to shoot, and then quickly jump up. You'll then meet the rocky wrenches, who chuck wrenches at you. You can clear them out with fireballs, or you can jump on them before they can do any damage by watching for them to peer out just a bit before attacking. You can jump on them then. Soon after is the pipe that leads to more in Koopa. His attacks aren't very much different from Larry's, he'll just attack more frequently. Jump on him three times, or shoot his ass with ten fireballs to take him down. Get the wand, and then transform the king back to normal. You'll get another letter from the princess, who explains that you can stomp on enemies with Goomba's shoe, and leaves you with a cloud item that will let you pass over a stage without having to beat it. Unfortunately, you can only use it once, and if you die, you'll have to go back. So now it's on to World 3, the Water World, and the first stage lets you know this right away by sending you underwater. Swim straight down here for a flower box, and if you're able to get the flower, blast the bloopers, otherwise you'll have to quickly swim past them. This plant will spit out red fireballs that slowly float up, so don't swim above them for too long. There's another flower box above this fireball plant here. If you need it, move quickly so you don't get hit, especially since you'll ricochet downward after smashing the box. Swim down here. Try not to make contact with the music note boxes so you don't careen into the fireball plant. Grab the 1-up mushroom here and swim up the pipe and you finish the stage. Stage 2 is above water, but you can't swim in it. It's like quicksand. You'll sink into it and have to jump your way out. To make matters worse, cheap cheeps will be swimming around and jumping into the air, similar to what they did in Mario 1. They'll jump out as they get level with you. Jump as they do and try to land on them, or away from them completely. If you have fireballs, even better. Blast their asses and it makes the ride across the level a lot easier. There's a flower box here at the beginning. Most of the rest of the stage, you're riding these platforms across the wire. There's a P-switch here, but there's really not a lot of coins to scarf up, so it's unnecessary. Right at the pipe that leads to the finish line, there's a flower box down below, but you run the risk of getting hit in the process, so be careful if you really want to risk getting it. Don't even bother if it's a regular mushroom. The mushroom house before stage 3 is guaranteed to give you a frog suit. 
Stage 3 is another where you have to watch the flying fish, only this time you've got a giant fish named Big Bertha that can swallow you whole, on top of the regular cheap cheeps. You can strike her with a fireball to keep her off the screen for a little while, otherwise she's there all the time, swimming back and forth stalking you. On top of that, the water level keeps rising and falling, so you could end up in the water if you're on a short platform. The rule of thumb here is to head for higher ground always, and wait on a high spot for the water level to drop. Then when it starts picking back up, use that time to run across until you find another one, matriculating your way across the stage. There's a flower box here under this music note block. If it's a mushroom, it'll travel to where you'll end up. But if it's a flower, it'll just stay still. So if you want it, kick the turtle shell into the blocks here, let it bounce a couple times, activate the P-switch, and then hit the music note block to get the flower. If you do this after you've uncovered the flower, it'll disappear once you drift off screen. Watch these spinning stick things, wait for them to stop, and then quickly jump across and get the flower box here. There are blue blocks you can pick up and toss as a weapon, so if you don't have fireballs, you can use them to wipe out the fat ass fish. I wouldn't worry too much about coin collecting in this stage, you're better off just getting the hell out of there. Jump across the spinning stick to get to the pipe, and you're at the end. Next up is the fortress, and once you know where to go, this stage is over in a matter of seconds. After a couple stratex pads, you'll find three thwomps and some ghosts. After each thwomp is three doors, so there are nine altogether. All of them but one will lead you to another room filled with water and a few cheap cheeps. If you end up in here, swim to the left, avoid the cheap cheeps, and knock either of these two blocks if you need a mushroom or a leaf. The blocks will reset each time you come down here, so you can always restore your power if you take a hit. Go up the pipe and you're back at the spot at the beginning of the thwomps. The fifth door will take you to this platform above the water where you can get a 1-up mushroom from this block. Otherwise, you'll want to take the sixth door. It leads to Boom Boom. He'll run back and forth like normal at first, but after you give him the first hit, he'll grow some wings and fly around. Once he swoops down, don't jump on him right away because he'll unleash his spikes, so wait for him to start flying again and smash him on his way up. Then he'll run back and forth fast. Again, the best strategy is to jump continuously right after his spikes retract and before he can even move. After blowing up the fortress, this barricade blows up and now you've got access to this area from the first pipe. There's a magic game here, and another one down here that you have access to only if you have a hammer. You can also get this right from the beginning if you still have the one from World 2, but you can get a hammer at any time from one of the Hammer Brothers. Stages 4 and 5 are each optional, but you have to pick at least one or the other. Stage 4 is the first outdoor stage in this world where water isn't very prevalent. Get this leaf block and slide through the Goombas down this hill. If you don't make this jump, you'll land in this small body of water with a cheap sheep. Hit the invisible block to get up, otherwise get a running start down the hill to fill the P-meter and fly above it. There's a yellow and red para Goomba ahead. Wipe them out, and then hit the P-switch here to unlock a bunch of hidden coins from behind the background. And get a flower box from here if you like. Down here there's a bunch of coin blocks and a 1-up shroom. Get it, but watch out for the lack of two that shows up. He'll drop green spine at ease, but it's just the spike balls, no spinies themselves here. Careful across the short gaps, grab a leaf here, and the end is just ahead. The fifth stage is another underwater level. You want to equip that frog suit you got from the mushroom house earlier. It gives you much better control for swimming. But you hop around like a doofus on land, so wear this thing only for levels like this. Swim down here, and bumping the blocks up here won't send you careening downward if you're wearing the frog suit, so you don't have to worry about hitting the Big Bertha down there. If you don't have a frog suit, there's a flower block here. Just watch out for the blooper and these black electric stationary jellyfish called Gelectrodes. The pipes will shoot bubbles out of them that'll push you in that direction. Keep that in mind if you cross them. If you have the frog suit, you can swim through the bubbles down this pipe, and hooking a quick right this way will lead you to three 1-up mushrooms. If you can't take the pipe, grab the flower from the box here. Just be careful of the Gelectro nearby. Then there's a fucking plethora of these guys. The safest route is to go under. Just keep your distance from the blooper and his children, and the pipe to the end is right after. By this point, you may end up taking on the Hammer Brothers. They both come in pairs and attack you from these block platforms, similar to Super Mario Bros. 1. Bump them from underneath, and if they're on the lower portion, stand directly in front of them and wait for them to jump up, and then take them out. Or shoot them if you have fireballs. The first one will give you a hammer, which will become useful in a minute, and the other gives you a star man. 
Now there's a mushroom house here that'll give you a flower, leaf, or frog suit, but you'll only have access to it if the bridge is down. It raises and lowers every time you beat a level or die. Use the hammer to break this rock and take the boat to a couple islands over here. There are two match games and two mushroom houses here. The mushroom houses will give you a flower, leaf, or frog suit. And when you take the boat to the mushroom house, you'll get either a flower, leaf, or mushroom. Up next is stage 6, an auto scroller above a wide open pit. There's a flower box here. Then jump across the spinning stick when it stops and kick this turtle shell this way so it smacks back and forth against this 10 coin block. Let this donut fall and kick this shell into the block here for a leaf. Take the lower path here and hit the block for a 1-up shroom. Just make sure you do it quickly so the screen doesn't bypass the gap you'll need so you can get the mushroom. The pipe that leads to the finish line is soon after that. Just make sure you shift position on the donut so none of them fall until you find the opening you'll need so the stick stops spinning and the paratrooper isn't in your way. Stage 7 is next, but you can skip this stage and the second fortress and go right to stage 8 if the bridge is down. Right away, there's a coin box above you, and a leaf block here that you have to bump. Jump on these little green guys called Spike, but watch out, they'll spit out a pair of spiked balls and toss them at you, so you may be better served to just run past them. Underneath all these blocks is a 1-up, but you have to be Super Mario to smash them and get to it. Just watch the spike dudes that hang around. Smash these blocks here and you'll find a hidden vine that'll send you up here for some extra coins and lead to a P-switch. If you left any blocks down below intact, you can get some more coins. Afterwards, climb onto the block here that the vine reached and jump onto this stretch of clouds. Hit the invisible music note block and jump on it to ascend to a coin bonus. And if you don't take this bonus trip, you're not really missing anything. If you need to access the second fortress, you'll go down a pipe underwater and have to swim around the Stratex pad and hit this flower box when the cheap cheeps are out of the way. Then you've got these stretches, a bar with the boo ghosts that peer above and below. Swim under the first pair, above the next one, and then carefully swim between these two. It's a tight squeeze to say the least. Right after that is the battle with Boom Boom, nothing you haven't seen before. So then you blow up the barricade and can gain access to this point if you get a game over. There's a match game, and then it's on to stage 8. This is another stage where the sea level changes constantly and you're trying to outrun Big Bertha the whole time. If you have a flower in your inventory, bring it. If you don't have fireballs, there's always these blue blocks you can pick up and toss at the bitch. Take this turtle shell against this block to spring up the hidden vine. It leads to a flower box if you need it. You can also use one of the blue blocks on this block here to get a 1-up mushroom. And then there are a couple hidden vines here you can use to climb to safety if you get stuck. The sea level changes at a very high rate, so you really don't want to get washed up here. The lower path leads to more coins and a P-switch, but fuck that, it's not nearly worth taking the risk of getting eaten, unless you just shot Big Bertha down, and the pipe to the finish line is just ahead. The ninth stage has a lot of explosives, bullet bills and bombs. If you stomp them, they'll explode momentarily. There's a leaf block here, just watch out for all the shit that's around you. Then up here you can blow up this block wall with one of the bombs, but it's a pain in the ass and it proves to be totally unnecessary as it leads to an area you can access later on anyway. Kick these blue blocks away and get the flower box. Then under this wall of blue blocks, you can find a 1-up mushroom. Then there's a pipe that leads underwater. If you swim right, you'll quickly find the pipe that leads to the finish line. If you swim left, you'll eventually get to the area you would have gotten to if you blew up that wall earlier. The pipe down here leads to some coins and a frog suit if you move to the right in time to get in here, and then you'll be led right back up into the water area before the end. So then you'll take a pipe over to an island on the other side to the castle where the king has been transformed into a tortoise, so it's time to hit the airship. It starts out with some rocky wrenches. Careful jumping on them, you don't want to ricochet into a bullet bill, so you're better off moving past them. When the wrenches and bullets and shit pass by, quickly run under here to get ahead of the screen. Just keep your eye on the timing of the cannonballs. If you need to get to the leaf box, move in quickly cause you might run out of time. Jumping on this screw will spin it across the chain and carry you over the flames, but you can just slip between the two. Wait for them to retract and run past them without a problem. Soon after is the pipe that leads to Wendy Okupa. She'll fire a ring that floats around and make small jumps. Jump on her, but make sure you do it away from the floating rings. And don't try to stomp her right after she comes out of her shell, cause she immediately fires another ring. It'll take a hit for sure. After 
she fires her third ring, she'll jump a lot higher. Try to land on her as she comes back down. After landing the third stomp, take the wand and transform the king, who looks a lot like Mario. Or actually more like Luigi since he's in green. Either way, you'll get a letter from the princess who mentions a white block that'll give you magical powers, and leaves you with a music box for your inventory. So now it's on to World 4, the Giant World, by far the most entertaining portion of the game. Take the first pipe to the right, the other one will lead you to the shortcut after you blow up the fortress. If you have a hammer, you can break this rock down here and enter the mushroom house and collect a tanuki suit, no matter what chest you choose. This suit is basically identical to Raccoon Mario, except if you hold down and B, you'll temporarily turn into a statue and be impervious to enemy attack. When you access the first stage, you'll notice everything is fucking huge. The enemies don't act differently, at least not in this stage, they're just bigger. Knock this Koopa Troopa shell into the block down here to free up space to get this leaf block. And then there's another one in this box here. If you're Raccoon Mario, get a running start and fly up here into this tank of water. Swim to the left and go down the pipe. There are two 1-up mushrooms in here. One here and one here. When you head out, you'll pop out right back into the same tank up in the sky. Drop back out of it. Jump across these clouds, kill the Koopa Troopers, and jump over the inexplicably still regular sized fireball breathing piranha plants at the pipe that leads to the exit. Just when you think you're finished with those water levels with the high tide and low tide, stage 2 brings all that back. Only now everything's big except for the cheap jeeps. Maybe it's actually Big Bertha in reverse as Little Bertha, I don't know. If you don't have fireballs, kick these blue blocks at the cheap cheeps or whatever else that might get in your way. Maintain the strategy from the other stages like this where you head for higher ground. Hit the P-switch here when the cheap cheeps are out of the way and grab the transformed coins. Then grab a star man here and you can just plow through everything on your way to the pipe that leads to the finish line. The mushroom house here will give you either a mushroom, leaf, or flower. Stage 3 starts off with a pair of giant hammer brothers. These guys jump into the air and when they land, the ground will shake and if you're standing on the ground, you won't be able to move momentarily. And that opens up things for them to attack you with their hammers. However, they'll pause from throwing anything at you right after they land, so time your jump to avoid their stomp to coincide with stomping on them, and then take the pipe into the underground. Most of the level involves jumping across long pits onto platforms, many of which are small and or have slopes so keep control of your jumps. On this small platform, hit this block for a leaf, and if you're Raccoon Mario, get a running start and fly up here for some extra coins. Kick this buzzy beetle shell into his buddy, but be ready to jump quickly cause the shell is gonna bounce back towards you. Then hop up here to get a 1-up mushroom, follow it as it slides across the floor till it drops in front of you. The last few jumps are a bit tricky cause the platforms are sloped and there's a pair of blocks here that bounce you, which could easily compromise your footing. You don't need a huge running start, just a small amount to get your momentum going and jump on the edge to get across and then you'll hit the pipe to the end. Next up is the first fortress stage. These candles are a lot like the boo ghosts that will attack you while you're facing away from them. The flames fall off and chase you so just run quickly under them. These thwomps move horizontally instead of vertically. The first one you can move by before it even shifts, but the second one you want to get close to it and wait for it to shift and then move on. Then there's a set of pipes. Go down the center one, hit this flower box, and then jump here to summon some hidden coin boxes so you can make your way up. Just keep your eye on the boo ghost, literally. When you come back up, you'll be right at the fight with Boom Boom. If you skip the pipes, the thwomp here can be a pain in the ass if you're Super Mario, cause you have to wait for the opening and do a tuck and roll as you run. Otherwise, if you're small, you can just run right under and soon after is the fight with Boom Boom, who doesn't fly this time around. After blowing up the fortress and the barricade, there's a match game waiting for you, and stage 4 is fucking underwater, in case you didn't have enough H2O in the last world. A lack of two will drop spinies at you, but you can really just swim fast and you'll probably be able to outrun them without much of a problem. There aren't any other enemies in this stage, just giant blocks and other obstructions to slow you down. If you still have a frog suit, use it. It'll make the stage even easier. And right at the beginning, you'll be able to get through these bubbles coming from the pipe you wouldn't normally be able to, and access a nice coin bonus. The P-switch here will unlock a bunch of hidden coins, and if you run out of time collecting the rest, there's another P-switch here. Like I said, the frog suit makes this level very easy. Just swim on and the spinies don't have a chance. Then there's a mushroom house that'll give you either a mushroom, a flower, or a leaf. 
By this point, you'll probably be battling the Hammer Brothers if you haven't already. Use the same strategy as earlier, waiting for them to jump and hop on them right after they land. You get a Cloud from one and a Starman from the other. Now, your objective is to get to the second fortress between stages 5 and 6. You only have to go through one of them, but there's a match game behind stage 5 and a mushroom house behind stage 6 that gives you a flower, leaf, or a tanuki suit. You can also go through both if you want to get to both prizes. At the beginning of stage 5, kick this turtle shell into this block to free up some room to get to the leaf block here. There's a flower block here. Just watch out for the bullet bills, particularly the flashing ones. They'll spin around and head back in that direction too. Use the bullet bill here as a boost to smack this block up here that sends a vine up here to a pipe that leads to a tanuki suit in this box as well as a piece switch that will unlock some hidden coins when you come back out of the pipe. The pipe to the finish line is right after. If you go through stage 6, break through these blocks and get a 1-up. Then there's a door that if you enter, it turns everything back to normal size, and it also uncovers a couple 1-ups you wouldn't normally be able to access, as well as a couple other power-ups. But before you enter it, head right and grab the leaf from this block if you need it, or a mushroom. Then go through the door, get a running start back at the beginning, and fly up to the clouds here to get a 1-up. Then bump this block to get a star man, and hit this block to get another 1-up mushroom. There's another door here, but you don't need to worry about it, as the home stretch is the same in either dimension. Just jump across the blocks, kill the Koopa Troopers, and the end is near. The second fortress is next, but first you've got another giant hammer brother to contend with. Kill him for a P-Wing. Early in the fortress stage, be careful with these donuts. Don't let them drop you into the lava. Hit the flower block here, and get a running start to jump high enough to get up here. Hit the P-switch here and the hidden coins back here reveal a door you can go through. You'll enter a room with these panels you can jump on that shift the platform up, while the light bulb ones are interactive. If you jump on it, it will shift you in the direction where you're facing and then upwards when you jump on it again. Use them to get between the pipes. Then enter this pipe, grab the flower, and then go down this pipe. It'll send you through this way. Then go up this pipe and ride the light bulb platform up here. Avoid the piranha plant, and go down the pipe. Then there are a couple hidden coin blocks in this room. Hit them and get this one up here. Then go down the pipe and hit this block for a whopping three extra lives. Holy shit. If you have the ability to, fly up this way, knock out the blocks, and you'll come across another stash of coins. Go up the pipe here, and you'll pop up back in the main fortress room. Just past the doors you enter to get the bonus shit. Boom Boom is right after this, and he fights you the same way he did in the first fortress. No flying. So now blowing up the fortress builds the bridge that leads to the castle. This king has been transformed into a mini stegosaurus, so it's on to the airship. This stage is basically nothing but flames. Wait for them to temporarily shut off before passing through. Sneak down here to grab some coins, but you may want to hurry back and take the top route so you can just jump on this bolt so you can pass over the flames down there without having to worry about passing them. Plus, the top route is easier right after anyway. You just have a rocky wrench to deal with as opposed to these two flames. If you take the low path, hurry and head back to the upper path when the paths cross so you can get the leaf block. At the home stretch, there's quite a few more of the flames, so watch their patterns and carefully slip between them when an opening presents itself, being especially careful on this spot towards the end. And the pipe that leads you to your battle with Iggy Koopa is right around the corner, and there's also a leaf block just past it. This stage is actually not a bad choice to use the P-Wing on if you have some trouble with it. The fight with Iggy doesn't differ much from Larry and Morton, but he does attack with more consecutive shots and he jumps higher. He's actually easier than Wendy. After taking him out with three shots, you'll grab the wand, transform the king, and you'll get a letter from the princess who tells you about the hidden whistle in World 2. Thanks a whole pant load, bitch, I'm already past that. Oh well, at least she gives you a P-Wing. So now on to World 5, the Sky World, although the first third of the world takes place on the ground. At the beginning of Stage 1, you'll encounter a bunch of chompers. Jump past them as they're coming back down, like last time. There's a leaf block in this little cranny here, but only go in there if the chomp hits you. Use the recovery time to slip by. Then there are these nippers that stand in one spot and hop up once you jump over them. Just make sure you get some height on your jumps. Then grab the Starman here, and you can plow through the walking snippers and yellow power goomba on your way to the finish line. Another option is equipping the P-Wing before entering the level. Right off the bat, fly up here and head up the pipe. It'll lead you down here where you can grab four 1-Up Mushrooms. Holy jumping fucking Jesus. 
Then fly up here, hit the P-switch, and a bunch of hidden coins will appear down here. Grab as many as you can. Then break these blocks that lead you back out near the end of the stage. Stage 2 can be beaten rather quickly if you're able to take the shortcut. Drop down the pipe and bounce off the music note blocks, one of which produces a leaf, and make your way upward to the pipe. Then go down the next pipe, get a flower block here, and break through these blocks to get three one-up shrooms. You'll pop back up and the pipe that leads to the end is just ahead. Now if you miss the music note block and drop down, you won't die, you'll have to take an alternate route. Go down the center pipe, the only one that you can go down, and you'll meet the buster beetles who toss blue blocks at you. Try to get to the blocks before they do and wipe them out, otherwise stay low and avoid their attacks. It's not a very long stretch, just a bunch of these guys and piranha plants. The mushroom house here will award you with a tanuki suit, no matter what chest you choose. Then go through the pipe here to pop out on the other side, and you have two options. You can either go through stage 3 or the fortress. You don't need to beat both, but you can if you want. Let's look at stage 3 first. Go down the pipe and start heading left. Get under the blocks here and knock the Goomba out of the chute. You can use it now to stomp enemies you normally can't, like the spinies and piranha plants. And you can walk on these munchers down here and get a 1-up mushroom. Stomp everything in your way, and if you don't have the shoe, just watch out for the gaps between the narrow platforms on your way to the end. Now the fortress. Watch the Stridex pad and fireball, wait for an opening, jump, and stop yourself from running into the path of the thwomp. Break the blocks here, grab a leaf, and head back down. Gather some momentum and fly back up to the pipe, which will lead to some coins forming the shape of an arrow pointing up. Hmm, wonder what's up there. Get a running start, fly up here, and get three hidden one-ups. Head down the pipe and you're back in the main hall of the fortress. The only thing you miss by not taking this route is a leaf block near the thwomp here. Carefully jump between the two simultaneous stratex pads and avoid them here too as you move past the thwomps. This last one here you have to jump over the lava and make your way back to get him to drop. Right after that is Boom Boom who doesn't fly here. There's a match game and two Hammer Brothers, both of which fight in pairs on these block platforms. The first battle will award you with a Starman, and the second one gives you a P-Wing. Next up is the Tower. There's a leaf block here between these Stridex pads, watch out for them. You'll head up a pipe and emerge on all these blocks, just watch out for the two phonies that attack you. Move past the Thwomp and Stratix pad, then go up the pipe, kick the Koopa Troopa away, and hit this block for a hidden vine that leads you up the pipe and out of the stage. You'll pop out in the second portion of the world, way up in the clouds, and now the sky theme of this world starts to take effect. At the beginning of stage 4, grab the leaf from the block here, and if you're Raccoon Mario, get a running start to fly up here for some coins and you can bypass about half the stage. Watch these spinning sticks, they don't stop spinning, so jump over them completely. Or make sure you land more toward the left so it sends you in an upward direction as opposed to firing you into the pit below. Then there are these that don't move at all, unless you stand on them and shift their position like a seesaw. Try to keep them as straight as possible. If you can't jump over these waterfalls, jump quickly to swim up them and get yourself back up. Then jump across the sticks, watching for when the spinning ones stop, and you'll hit the pipe that leads to the end. Most of stage 5 is a stretch of these donuts, so don't stand in one spot for too long or you'll drop. There's a leaf block here you'll have to bump to get to, and another one here. But in between those two is a pipe you can take underground with your tail or with a Koopa Troopa shell for some coins and a Tanuki suit. If you don't take the shortcut, you're not missing anything significant. Right before the end, there's a leaf block in here. Just watch the fireballs of the piranha plant spit, and then another one down here you have to bump into. So if you lose the Tunuki suit, or if you don't have it in general, you should exit the stage with a raccoon suit. The mushroom house here will give you either a flower, leaf, or a Tanuki suit. Then there's a match game, and you can pick stage 6 or 7 without having to do the other. Stage 6 is an auto-scroller, and you'll be using these para beetles as platforms for the first half of the stage. They'll fly straight, but dip down if you stand on them, and then fly back up if you're on them for long enough. There's a leaf block here, and once you get onto these block platforms, hit the block down here for a P-switch. Avoid the fire chomp that floats around. Kill him if he gets too close, and collect the coins. Just make sure you're not standing on a set of blocks with nothing underneath when they turn back to coins. Head into the pipe that leads to the end, just outrun the lack of two. The seventh stage is quirky because if you go into the stage with an invincibility star, certain blocks will have invincibility stars that normally wouldn't, as long as you're still invincible when you hit the block. So if you're fast enough, you could run through the entire stage invincible. 
There are six of these hidden stars, two of them that start off these trios of question mark blocks, two of them near this pipe, one of them in this little nook right after it, and one more above this pipe. If you're taking the normal route, watch out for the micro goomba in this block, and hit this block for a flower. Sneak down here and carefully knock this block for a 1-up if you dare. You also have the option to go down this pipe and grab some coins. This shortcut essentially skips nothing in the stage, and you'll meet up with the Lakitu and some bullet bills. There's nothing to hang around here for, so simply outrun them all and you're at the end. The mushroom house here will give you either a mushroom, flower, or a leaf. By this time you'll probably face the Hammer Brother guarding this area. It's another pair of them. Wipe them out and get a music box. So now on to the second fortress. This place is loaded with lava. Wait for the fireballs to drop before advancing to the next platform, including the ones that come from the ceiling. There's a star man here at the end of this line of question mark blocks, just watch the fireballs. Down the home stretch there's more fireballs, some narrow platforms, and a couple boo ghosts that'll attempt to distract you. Grab a flower from here right before the pipe that leads to Boom Boom, he'll fly here. After blowing up the fortress and barricade, there's a match game, and then you'll hit up stage 8. There's not a lot to talk about here, just hop from cloud to cloud, dodging the spinies that the Lakitu drops, or pumping them with fireballs, and of course taking out the Lakitu himself. There are two leaf blocks, one here at the beginning, and one right here before the pipe at the end. Other than that, there's just a few Koopa Troopers and Paratroopers abound. If you have a hard time dodging these little bastards, the P-Wing could come in handy here. The ninth stage is an interesting auto-scroller in that it scrolls into the upper right direction. Once again, there's not a whole lot to explain, just jump from platform to platform. But keep in mind that it's not as easy as it sounds, since the platforms are all floating vertically and horizontally as the stage scrolls, so you can't pussyfoot around. To complicate matters is a couple of fire chomps. You can stop them, just make sure you redirect yourself to the next platform. You don't want to sacrifice your life for the sake of killing one of these fuckers. Not long after that is a pipe that leads to the end, with the lack of two guarding the card. You could also use a P-Wing to simply fly over everything too. Now onto the castle where this king has been transformed into an albatross, so it's airship time. Hit the flower box here and then duck down in this corner to avoid the cannonball. Then stand between these two cannons until they fire, then move on. Then you get one of these rotating cannons. Stand underneath it and after it fires off the lower diagonal shots, make your move. Down the home stretch is a line of eight cannons, four up top and four underneath, plus a bullet bill that attacks from behind. Keep your eye mostly on the ones below, making sure it jumps to bounce off each cannonball while shifting your way between the ones that come from above. Right after that is the pipe that leads to Roy Koopa. He's a big bastard that shakes the ground after landing from one of his jumps, which will freeze you up momentarily, making you vulnerable to attack. So try to jump whenever it looks like he's gonna land. Also, after every time you stomp him, he'll take two short hops while in his shell, both of which shake the ground up, so take short jumps to counteract this. Other than that, his attacks with the wand are no different from most of the other Koopalings. Stomp him three times, take the wand, transform the king, and read your letter from the princess, who warns you about enemies trapped in ice that will be freed if you use fireballs, and you'll get a cloud. So now on to World 6, the Ice World. And as you probably would expect, the ground is going to be slippery as balls a lot of the time. At the beginning of stage 1, hit the flower box here. Fireballs will make life much easier against these piranha plants that use their breath to keep spiked balls afloat over them. These guys are called patooies. If you have to jump over them, wait for the ball to drop before jumping. And if they're the walking variety, it's the opposite. Wait for them to raise. It's easy to get by unscathed. If you're Raccoon Mario, at the beginning, get a running start and fly up into the sky and go through this hidden door into a little bonus room. Hop up here, hit the P-switch, and grab all these coins. There's a leaf block here, then carefully jump over the Patui and maneuver your way onto this pipe next to the other one so you can jump over the spiked ball and hit the exit. Stage 2 is an auto-scroller. Watch your footing on these ice platforms and use this blue block to smash in this leaf block. The screen will then start shifting upwards. Jump across these clouds quickly to keep yourself from falling behind. As the screen starts to make its way back downward, you'll notice a small area you can sneak into if you quickly jump across the clouds and smack the block that you can't see anymore for a 1-up. Right after that is the pipe that leads to the end. The mushroom house here will provide you with either a mushroom, flower, or a leaf. Stage 3 is another one of these fucking high altitude levels. Gotta love these on icy terrain. 
Bounce onto this platform, duck under here as it shifts, and make your way up to this platform when the Koopa Trooper is out of the way. Again, be careful of your footing. If you want the leaf block here, you'll have to kick the shell into it. Speaking of kicking shells, use this one to summon a hidden vine from this block. Climb it, go down the pipe, and grab the Tanuki suit. And fly up this way for some extra coins past the blocks. You'll come back out through the same pipe. From this platform, smack the block from underneath for a 1-up, and smash the paratroopers on your way to the finish line. By now, you'll probably battle the first set of Hammer Brothers. It's another pair of them, but this time it's on ice. So be careful with your footing as you bump them off and collect a hammer. You can use this to crack open the rock that will lead you from the first pipe to this one, which you'll need access to if you get a game over and want to bypass the first three stages. So now on to the first fortress. Ride this platform across the wire, keeping your eye on the fireballs that spew out. Grab a leaf from here if you can grab it without having to risk your life jumping at it. There'll be a series of stratex pads here. Stay on the platform as it descends and jump over each of them as they swing by you. Then you'll enter a door into the next section. Grab a leaf here and as long as you're Raccoon Mario, you can get a running start and fly up here for a 1-up shroom. And you'll bypass this part here with the duo of Stratex pads that guard a Starman from this block. Grab a leaf from here if you need it and Boom Boom is just ahead. He'll fly during this battle. So you'll blow up the fortress and the barricade. And then there's a match game, right before you head to stage 4. Careful on these spinning sticks. Slip onto this narrow ice block carefully and bump the block above for a 1-up. Ride this platform around the wire and hit the block in the middle for a leaf and then hop platform to platform. Or you can smack an invisible note block here that'll spring you up for a generous coin bonus. Then hit the P switch here to get a few extra coins from these blocks. And if you're Raccoon Mario, you can get a running star and fly up here for a 1-up. Toward the end, there's a bunch of constantly spinning sticks. Let them carry you across and the end is near. You may have to battle the other two sets of Hammer Brothers in this area. They both work in pairs on the ice. Wipe them out to get a Starman and a Cloud. You only need to clear one or the other between stages 5 and 6, but 5 is necessary if you want the Mushroom House. Take the pipe underground and you'll be relieved to know that the ground isn't slippery here, but it's patrolled by these annoying buster beetles that toss blue blocks at you. That wouldn't be so bad if it weren't for the fact that the level doesn't seem to end. When you get to the pipe at the end, you'll get a leaf block here, and the next pipe takes you right back into the underground area again. The stage baffled the fuck out of me for a little while before I figured out that you need to fly up one of the gaps in the ceiling to get to the exit, which is why there's always a leaf power up available at the end of the pipe. Before we get to the exit though, keep in mind that you can fly up to this other gap at the beginning to get some coins. The stage itself is nothing but the Buster Beetles plus a Koopa Trooper and Piranha Plant near the pipe to the leaf. When you get to where the Koopa Trooper is and your Raccoon Mario, get a running start and fly up here and you'll see the pipe to the end, but it's guarded by these fucking nippers. Even once I figured out how to get up here, I was stumped at what to do. You can't get through and break the blocks without getting hit, it's impossible. I tried carrying a blue block up here to wipe them out, but that doesn't work. And then I realized, oh yeah, I'm a fucking idiot, you're supposed to grab the Koopa Troopa shell that's near this area, bring it up there with you and knock them out. Head to the pipe and you finish the stage. This opens the door to the Mushroom House, which will give you a Hammer Brother suit, no matter which chest you choose. While wearing this, you can throw these slow-moving arc-patterned hammers, as well as shield yourself from fireballs when crouching like a turtle. It's an interesting, but rare item. If you don't want to bother with this bullshit from Stage 5, then try another underground area, Stage 6. This one also doesn't have any slippery floors, but it does have a ton of narrow water pockets that also contain flying cheap cheeps that fly up your ass. Take the upper path at the beginning and it'll lead you to a flower block. Then head back down and take the low path. Smack this block here for an invincibility star to clear through this. Then you'll end up underwater and there are a ton of cheap cheeps swimming around trying to get in your way. Swim up here for a hidden 1-up mushroom, then carefully swim between the cheap cheeps and bump this block for a flower. If you weren't shooting fireballs earlier, hopefully you are now. You'll get through the level much quicker. Then watch the piranha plants and cheap cheeps between these pipes as you head past one last stretch of spikes and flying cheap cheeps toward the finish line. There's a match game next, and if you've saved your hammer from earlier, you can break this rock here which will allow you to skip stage 7 entirely and go straight for the second fortress. But assuming you didn't do that, let's take a look at stage 7. It's another auto-scroller in high altitude. Hit this block for a leaf, take the top route, let the donut fall, and jump after it drops. 
slip down here for a flower, and with this donut fall so you can jump to the next spot. Follow these layers of donuts as the screen scrolls up, just don't stand in one spot for too long. Then let this donut fall down here so you can reach the pipe that leads to the end. Now the second fortress, and unlike the first one, there is ice in here. Grab a leaf block here, keep your eye on the boo ghosts and slip by the thwomps after they've moved. In spots like this, take advantage of the fact that the floor is icy and slide underneath the gap. Get another leaf block here, just watch the stratix pads as they float around you. A couple thwomps later and you're at the boom boom battle. He won't fly, but the surface being slipperier than shit makes it more of a challenge. Blowing up the fortress will build a bridge up here that allows you to pass through the pipe from earlier between the first fortress and stage 4. And now it's stage 8. And suddenly the grass isn't frozen anymore. What the hell happened? Oh well. Smash this block here with a blue block for a leaf and jump over the patui when the ball is down. Kick the Koopa Troopa shell down the line to wipe out as many of these nippers as you can. Otherwise jump high to avoid getting nipped. Kick these blue blocks out of the way to get a leaf block, and jump over these three nippers. Then kick away these blue blocks to get a P-Switch. If you're Raccoon Mario, quickly get a running start and fly up here for a chunk of coins. The finish line is right after. Stages 9 and 10 are another one of those pick one or the other situations. In stage 9, head down the pipe and you're underwater underground. Watch the blooper here. He'll send his children after you in all four directions. Keep your distance. Swim up here, jump over the munchers, and smack this note block for a flower. Now it's on to a fork. If you take the low route underwater, you have to deal with piranha plants and Big Bertha and shit. But if you take the top route, you can get some goodies. There's a P-switch here you can reach by smacking the hidden coin box here, and all the munchers down there turn into coins. Grab them. There's a flower here, and soon after is the pipe that leads to the exit. If you have a P-wing, you can also fly right over the stage from the beginning. Grab a 1-up in the process. Pretty sweet deal. Now stage 10. Get a flower block here, then take out this buster beetle and smack this block with a blue block to spring up a hidden vine. Climb it, activate this P-switch, and a shitload of coins will appear. If you're quick enough, hurry this way. There's a flower in this block here. Grab it quickly, only if you're not already equipped with fireballs, and hurry to this pipe that was guarded by four munchers who have just turned into coins. Fire at them to free them from the ice and collect the coins before the transformation ends and head down the pipe. As you slide down, bring yourself up through this gap and you'll find a hammer suit. You'll actually surface from the pipe a little further back. Now this is what the princess was talking about when she mentioned that shit in the ice could be freed by warming them up. Both coins and munchers are iced up. If you have fireballs, you can heat them up to collect some coins. Just try not to free any munchers. Then take a good long jump at the end. Watch the spinning stick and you're at the end. Another fortress? Are you kidding me? If you're Raccoon Mario, get a running start at the beginning and fly up here. Watch out for the Stratex pads and fly up here for an extra life. Keep an eye on the Boo Ghosts as they chase you on this conveyor belt. And if you're feeling adventurous, you can get a leaf block here once the ghost on the stretch starts heading left. Just make sure you move your ass. Here you're on a conveyor belt and you have to stay just to the right enough to avoid the Stratex pad, but just left enough to avoid contact with the Thwomp as it comes down, and then quickly move past it. There are a pair of stretches and a pair of Stratex pads that circle towards the middle. Watch the pattern, wait for an opening, and make a running jump across and head in the door. You're now in a room where the wall lowers. You have to wait for the door to align with the floor, but in the meantime there are three boo ghosts in here. Stand at the far end of either side of the room so they're all facing you and just wait for the door. You'll then battle Boom Boom, who doesn't fly here. So after blowing up the fortress and the barricade, it's on to the castle. This king has been turned into a seal, so it's all aboard the airship. The beginning is just a couple screws you have to spin to get across the gap. Then it's a bunch of flames you have to slip by once the openings present themselves. Then as the screen scrolls up, hit the leaf block but move quickly cause the screen won't allow you to stay here long. Soon after is the pipe that leads you to Lemmy Koopa. This little goofball balances himself on a ball and fires smaller balls at you. He won't fire anything out of the wand. Stomp on him as he passes by, avoid contact with the sides or bottom of the balls he throws at you, but you can actually use his balls as a springboard, so jump on his balls. Uh, you know what I mean. After three stomps, he's finished. 
take the wand, transform the king, and read the letter from Princess Toadstool, who for the second time now gives you information that pertains to an area you've already covered. Not only that, but her info is misleading. The whistle is in the darkness in the third world. No, you dumb slut. It's in the third stage of world one. Ugh. Good news is, you've got a P-Wing. So now on to world seven, the pipe world. Stage 1 has a door right off the bat that leads you in here. Climb up here, go up either of these pipes, watch out for the piranha plants, and go up this pipe. Now go up the pipe on the left and kick this turtle shell to spring a leaf from this block. To the right of these two coin blocks is a hidden one up. Grab it, and if you're Raccoon Mario, get a running start down here and fly up this way up the pipe for some coins. Otherwise, bounce up the music note blocks, avoiding the plant on your way up. Before going up this pipe, use this area here to scout where the Koopa Troopers are. If they're walking near the pipe, don't take it or you'll walk right into them. And the pipe that leads to the end is right after. Fittingly, there are a ton of pipes on the map screen of this world. Head down this one and you'll come up here. Take the pipe to the right of it to a mushroom house which will award you a flower, mushroom, or a leaf. Now head back and go to stage 2. Use the blue blocks to get to this flower box. Fireballs will make things much smoother against these nippers. Go down this pipe and swim left. Hit the P-switch and grab the coins it transforms into nearby. Now go past this pipe you came down through, skip the next two pipes, and then head up the following one. Get the green paratrooper out of the way and bump all these hidden music note blocks across the way. Then go down this pipe for a leaf if you want to convert to raccoon powers. Then go back the other way and take the first pipe back up and now you can cross the music note blocks and there's a hidden one up mushroom up here. Heading down this pipe will lead you to a flower block if you want it and the rest of the way is just piranha plants and an ipper. When you get to the end, head down this pipe that leads you to the finish line. Go through this pipe and stage 3 is next. It's one of those weird stages where you can go through the entire stage invincible if you're quick, starting with this star at the beginning. Plow through everything and the next two are at these question mark blocks that look identical. Then the next one is this lower block. The top one is a flower block and now the lack of two drops the green spiny balls. They don't take the spiny form. And then there are two more stars on either side of the small pipe that spits out Goombas and the finish is just ahead. If you can't get all the stars, run your ass off when the Lakitu shows up to outrun the spiny balls. And if you want a few extra coins, hit this P-switch to unlock them. Just don't bother with this shit if you're trying to stay invincible. There's a match game between stages 4 and 5. Stage 4 starts off with a pipe that leads to the main level. But first, if you're Raccoon Mario, you can fly up here for a couple 1-up shrooms before you head down. This is an underwater auto-scroller, and it is a bitch. Swim quickly past this fireball plant to get a flower from this block. Just watch the spiny cheap cheeps that swim by. Carefully swim under the big Bertha, and then watch out for the blooper that sends its children after you. Then you have to swim through a fucking infestation of these Delectros, plus a big Bertha in the middle of it. Swim carefully here, this shit is like surgery. Slip by the big Bertha when the opening presents itself, and the pipe that leads to the end is ahead. Stage 5 is unnecessary, as it only gives you access to a mushroom house, but you can get some good shit from here, including a possible frog suit that would make stage 4 a hell of a lot easier. You'll head down a pipe and soon realize that this is an underground pipe maze. Kinda. Follow the linear path and use the blue blocks to wipe out the ba bombs and Koopa Trooper here. Then slip up here, go through the first pipe, and knock the hidden one-up block here, but you can't get the shroom unless you go back down the pipe and quickly hop up the next one. If you need a flower, head all the way to the left. Go down this pipe and hit the block here. Or if you want a leaf, slip down this pipe instead. If you have a tail, you can knock this block out of the way for a little shortcut. Otherwise, you have to go down this pipe and take out a couple of Koopa Troopers. No big deal. Knock these blue blocks out of the way and go down the pipe. You'll bypass the spiny that way. Then set up a path by knocking these hidden coin boxes. Then go back, smack these hidden coin boxes up here, go back and walk across. Get the hidden one up shroom here, go down the pipe across the walkway you built earlier and you'll hit the pipe that leads to the end. The mushroom house will give you either a hammer suit, tanuki suit, or a frog suit. The latter of which can make stage 4 a lot easier to swim through, like I mentioned. Never mind the pipe over here, it just leads you to a dead end. Take this pipe, and now you have the option of pressing onto the fortress, or taking on the optional piranha plant mini stage that'll open up some pathways and give you an item, essentially replacing the Hammer Brothers that don't occupy this world. So let's take a look at this piranha stage. 
give yourself some room so you can get a high jump to make it onto these pipes. Just time it so you don't get tagged with fireballs. Then there's a stretch of munchers that alternate between a series of small pipes. Time your jumps accordingly so you can get by. Then duck here to avoid the crossfire of these two piranha plants and head down this pipe and get a P-Wing and the stage is done. The pipe you now have access to leads you toward the end of the map, but you're cock blocked right now by this barricade. So now onto the first fortress. First you're in a small room enclosed with blocks that leads you to a completely deserted room which looks like there would be enemies. This whole fucking fortress is a ghost town, and there aren't even any ghosts. Well, this stage is basically a little puzzle. This room has a flower box in here, but you actually don't want it. First knock this P-switch up here to turn all these blocks into coins. Now this is hitting the fucking jackpot. But before you feast on the coins, the P-switch also unlocks this door. Go in and go down the first pipe and get the Tanuki suit. You'll pop back up, go through the next pipe, and you'll end up in this room. Head through this door in the corner, and you're back into this main corridor. Now from here, you can either head straight for the end by flying up here through this pipe and battle a flying boom boom, or you can go back to the beginning and continue using the P-Switch to load up on coins. You actually could let the time limit run out and lose a life, come back and beef up on more coins, gaining more lives than you lose, and increase it all the way up to 99 if you have the time and patience for that. So after blowing up the barricade, there's a match game here, and now on to stage 6. This is another of those scale the place vertically levels. Hop on this light bulb platform to maneuver your way around everything. Take this up platform and slip yourself between these blocks, just watch the spikes. And then when you get here, activate this left platform and hop over the pipe to come out to the other side and head up this pipe. Ride this light bulb platform to get around these blocks, and if you need it, there's a leaf block right here. Now ride these platforms across, just watch your jumps, you don't want to land in the spikes. Slip up these boxes and ride this platform up and around these pipes with the piranha plants peeping out of them, and hop up this pipe to the end. Take this pipe to the next island here, and now stages 7 and 8 are a pick one or the other, although 8 does lead you to a mushroom house. Stage 7 is another wacky grab stars continuously levels. It's just one great big stretch of munchers and some pipes to slow you down. There are four stars total. One here at the beginning, another one right after, one here at the next block, and one in this little nook here. Be quick and you'll get to the end. Or you can just use the P-Wing you got from the Piranha Plant stage. This match game between stages 7 and 8. Stage 8 is loaded with plants. Wait for the right time to jump between these two and land safely on the pipe. There's an invincibility star here, and grab a leaf down here if you need it. Grab a one up here, and try to lure this Patui towards you. Slip by the Piranha Plant and bump this hidden music note block for a coin bonus. If you can manage to avoid the Patui and slip down this pipe, you'll get a hammer suit. Then wait for the walking Patui to get close to the one in the pipe and jump between the spiked balls when they fly up, and then ready yourself here. The snipper on the blocks here spits fireballs. Neither of them move, so you don't have to worry about that. If you can't throw fireballs at them, scale your way up to the top. Just don't get too close and trigger his fireball shots. Then run, cause he'll attack straight up too, and the end is just ahead. This mushroom house will award you a frog suit, tanuki suit, or hammer suit. Stage 9 is a bit of a maze. Hit this music note block here for a flower, then hop up these gaps, take out the red paragoomba, follow the linear path through these blue blocks, and you'll end up at the top of the structure and head right. You can also get to a flower box and some extra coins at the start if you gain some momentum and fly up here. Now back at the top. Drop down at the music note blocks, head left through the blue blocks, grab some coins, hit the flower box, head down the gap and left, and if you're Super Mario, break the block and head in for some coins and a hidden one-up. Go up the gap you came in from, break the blue blocks, and break through these blocks if you can to get some coins. Then head right and grab this flower block, and pass these blue blocks to the pipe at the end. Now onto the second fortress. Hop from pipe to pipe and turn around to let the boo ghost get close to you and give you a place to jump. There's a star man here, if you're careful enough in bumping the block down here to get to it. Jump in front of the thwomp to trigger it and then jump when the plant's out of the way too. Time your jump just right here so you can duck down as soon as you land and not get bitten by the plant and then move on. Hit this block for a leaf and carefully slip into this nook to head down the pipe. 
slide under these pillars if you're Super Mario. Just make sure the dry bones and stridex pads are out of the way. And then trigger the thwomp to come down before you slide under the next one. And an on-winged boom boom awaits right after. After blowing up the fortress and the barricade, you gotta go through another Piranha Plant mini stage. Once again, it's mostly munchers, but now they alternate every other pipe instead of in pairs. So you have to be even more precise. You might even want to just walk across instead of doing any jumping. Right before the end, you can save yourself the hassle of worrying about these pricks by bouncing off the music note blocks and the paratrooper. And right after that is the pipe that leads you to a mushroom at the end of the stage. Now onto the castle, where the king has been transformed into a piranha plant, so it's time for yet another airship. It starts off with a screw you can ride over the flames, but you're really better off just using the platforms on either side of the flames as a safe zone to get by. Slip down here for a flower block, and then it's a few more of these flames. Get a running start to get over the gap here. Then there's a few rocky wrenches and small platforms with bolts on the end of each. Use them to give you a shorter jump to the next one. Hop across these bolts, and right after is the pipe that leads to the battle with Ludwig von Koopa. He shakes up the ground every time he lands like some of the previous Koopalings, and he takes short hops, so make your jump short too so you can keep control of when you're in the air and not get immobilized. He'll also fire rapid shots from the wand, so try to stay out of his line of fire. Stomp him three times, take the wand, transform the king, and read another letter from the princess. Oh fuck, never mind. Wouldn't you know it, she's been kidnapped by Bowser. So it's on to the eighth and final world, the Dark World. Your first stop is a tank stage, very reminiscent of the airship stages cause it's an auto-scroller and there are cannonballs out the ass. Wait for the openings between the cannonball shots and jump over the gaps where the bombs land inside. You don't want to end up in there, it's bad news. Look for these little indentations, they almost always have a rocky wrench in them. So stomp them out, and when you get here, slip under this block for a leaf. When you get to this big ass cannon, duck down so the cannonball passes over you, and jump up onto it once the screen gives you the room. And soon after is the pipe that leads to a battle with a boomerang brother. Take him out, and you'll get a star man. The next stage is another auto-scroller, and it's a ship on lava. Although you can swim in this shit, so I guess it's just water with red food coloring, I don't know. If you need a power up, slip in this nook and hit the flower box, just watch out for the cannonballs that fire down. When you get to the big cannon, wait for the screen to catch up and bring the next piece of the ship into view so you can jump across the gap and not have to swim. Just make sure you time it so you jump between the cannonballs. Then after a few rocky wrenches, there'll be another of these big ass cannons. Do the same thing, but be ready for one in front of you too. Then wait for the screen to catch up so you can clear the gap and not have to worry about getting in front of these three cannons. Then one more big cannon facing the right, and right after is the pipe that leads to a battle with Boom Boom, who doesn't fly. So you'll blow up the barricade and be able to take this pipe down here to the second portion of the map. Now here there are five portals, though only three are active, the two on each end and the one in the center. The other two you'll just skip right over. All three of them are mini stages that award you with the leaf at the end, but interestingly, you don't have to go through all of them. You can select them manually, or you can just skip them, but a hand will randomly pop up and pull you into one of them. So let's see what happens in the first portal. This place is littered with Hammer Brothers. First, you have a fireball breathing Hammer Brother, then a pair of regular Hammer Brothers on these blocks, and you can get a leaf here. Then a boomerang brother on the bridge, followed by a giant Hammer Brother. You already know the strategies of defeating each. Take the pipe up and grab the leaf. The second portal is nothing but a bunch of fireballs popping out of the lava. Wait for the openings, jump between them, and grab the coins. Nothing else really needs to be said, and soon you'll head up the pipe and take the leaf. The third and final of these hand portals contains a bunch of flying cheap cheeps. Outrun them, but watch your footing as there are a lot of gaps in the bridge. There's a flower box here. Use it to spring yourself up over this blockade so you don't have to slide under it, and the pipe to the leaf is just ahead. The next stage is an airship, and this screen auto-scrolls fast, so you have to be fleet of foot here. But you also don't want to outrun the screen. Stay behind and let the screen catch up so you can see the platform ahead before you jump. It's rocky wrenches and flames all throughout. Stomp out the rockies to get them out of the way. Just stop yourself from ricocheting into the flames. 
This one in particular can be a bitch to get by. You want to jump early so you don't get tagged with the wrench in midair. This one's the opposite, where you want to wait for him to throw it before you jump. And the pipe that leads to a flying boom boom is just ahead. So you blow up the pipe that lets you access the pipe from here to the third portion of the map. But you can't do anything from here yet anyway. You're blocked by another barricade. So go through this pipe and you'll access this dark area. And it's on to stage one. Jeez, all that bullshit, and this is the first stage of the world? If you're Raccoon Mario, fly up here and hit a P-Switch. You'll get a bunch of hidden coins down here. And if you fly up here and go down this pipe, you'll get three 1-Up Mushrooms, as long as you stop yourself from sliding. Slip under this block down here to get a leaf, and if it's a mushroom, wait for the plant's fireballs to get out of the way. Careful going down between these pipes. The blocks on the sides will bounce you from side to side. You might want to just avoid contact with them altogether. Bullet bills will fire from these cannons here, not the one on the ground, so wait down here for them to pass and then move on and grab the star man in here if you're feeling daring enough. There's a one-up shroom in here, and a leaf block here. Just keep an eye on when the bullet bill fires and face the boo ghost to keep him at bay. Use the paratrooper as a boost to get up here, and then when you jump on the cannons, keep in mind that there's a hidden coin block in here that can throw you off. Use this music note block as a springboard to get up here. Position yourself carefully on the pipe and the end is just ahead. Now onto stage <coughs> 2. There's some quicksand at the beginning, but it's actually not a death trap. It leads to two different pipes you can take. The one on the left leads you to a leaf, and the one on the right gives you a shitload of coins. And both of them will send you back up about two thirds of the way through the stage, so either way it's a good call. If you don't take the shortcut, there's a series of piranha plants here. Run past them quickly so their fireballs don't threaten you. There's a P-switch in this block here. If you want to hit it, wait for the fireballs to subside first, but it really doesn't do much besides give you an easier jump to the music note blocks here. It's not like it's a hard jump to make or anything, so I don't bother with it. What you really have to watch out for is this goddamn evil sun again. He'll be hanging around for the rest of the stage too. Bounce off the music note blocks, avoid the fireballs, the plants spit at you, and watch for when the sun swoops down. Carefully jump on these music note blocks. Make sure the paratrooper isn't in your way and the end is right after. So next up is the fortress, and this stage is an annoying clusterfuck of doors that lead you all over the place. It's not exactly Monster Party Stage 6, but it's still a pain in the ass. Basically, there are two long rooms, one with blue bricks and one with white bricks. The doors will take you from one side to the other, so you'll know which room you're in at all times. It's just a matter of finding the doors that take you to where you want to go. Raccoon Mario is the best ability to have here, as there are a lot of blocks that barricade your way, and being able to smash through them will make things much easier to get through. Avoid the Stridex pads in the beginning, and head up this way through the door. Heading back will give you a leaf. If it's only a mushroom though, you can instead go to this flower box first and get a mushroom and then head back and get the leaf. The ultimate objective is to get to the far right of the white bricked side, and if you have a leaf, you could theoretically get there from here by smashing the blocks and continuing right. But if you don't have the tail, you can break these blocks here that barricade the door. Hit the P-switch up here, and once you go through the door, a hidden door will be summoned by the P-switch. So head in here and you can get a 1-up from up here. Then take this door here. Watch the thwomps that move in a diagonal motion and get the one up here. Now head through this door, wait for the thwomp to drop, and hop up here for a leaf block and move on carefully on these conveyor belts. Head through this door, hit the P-switch, grab all these coins, slip down here, and head through this door for a one up against the wall. Then head back and go through this door. Move right, watch the stratex pads, slip down, jump over the thwomp, and hit the P-switch here. It'll bring up some hidden doors. This one leads you to a flower, if you need it. If you do get it, go back and hit the switch again, this time going through this door. Duck under the spikes and you'll battle Boom Boom, who doesn't fly, but it is on a conveyor belt, so that's one thing that makes this battle different. So you'll blow up the fortress and the barricade that was blocking you earlier, and taking this pipe will lead you to the fourth and final portion of the map, and Bowser's Castle is on the horizon. First you gotta get through this tank stage. Much like the earlier auto-scrolling levels of this world, give yourself some space to see what's in front of you. Pass through when the cannonballs are out of the way, and don't let yourself fall into the gaps with the bombs. It's not a very long stage, just a bunch of cannons and rocky wrenches. And soon enough you're at the pipe for a final battle with Boom Boom, who flies for this encounter. 
So now on to Bowser's Castle for the big rematch. Start off by getting a running start straight ahead so you don't get blasted by these lasers from the Bowser statues. Then ride this thing that takes you up here. If you go through this door instead, you'll end up in this room that'll take you back to the beginning. After getting up here, ride this donut down and then jump to keep yourself from falling down a bottomless pit. Then watch the Stratex pads as you ascend the staircase, and then do the same as you head back down the same way. Make sure you grab this hidden one up when you reach the summit though. There are a shitload of donuts over a long lava pit. Jump between them once the fireballs get out of your way, and up ahead there are four paths, each with a different destination. The bottom one will lead you into the same room as earlier where you have to go left to get back to the beginning of the stage again. Needless to say, you don't want to go there. The second one from the top gives you a leaf. The one at the very top and the second one from the bottom will lead you to two separate rooms that each lead you to the end. The second one from the bottom is a little more challenging. as There are some Stratex pads to get by and another donut you have to let drop and jump so you don't fall to your doom. Go through the door and get a running jump quickly to avoid the laser shot from the statue. Don't worry, the rest of them won't fire at you. Grab the leaf here, carefully jump across these platforms, and watch the flames that Bowser sends after you from a distance. This looks familiar, doesn't it? Soon after is the door that leads to Bowser. Now the other option is up top. You'll either need a leaf where you can fly easily from the area below, or you can head to the left side where all the donuts are, take a running jump, and follow the path of them till you get to the door. This area is very similar. Once again, only the first statue fires a laser. Get a running jump past it. And then the lava pit where Bowser's fire spits come after you is hovered by donuts. Don't stand on them for too long, and get a running jump so you can get high enough to land on here. And the door is just ahead. Now for the Bowser battle. He'll fire off two or three flames and then jump into the air and try to crash down on you. Get out of the way and he'll break through the bricks and repeat the process. The idea is to break away the center, so try to lure him there and when he breaks them all to the bottom, he'll crash through and take a long ass fall to the ground. This door opens up and you'll find a weeping princess who jokes with you that the princess is in another castle. Fucking smart ass. Do you have any idea how much bullshit I had to just go through to save your sorry ass? So then the curtain that opened at the start of the game closes, but then reopens to give you a slideshow of the eight worlds. And that is Super Mario Bros. 3, an absolute classic if there ever was one. Some games have aged better than others over the years, but Super Mario Bros. 3 is one of those games that is just as fun to play now as it ever was. Justifiably, it's highly regarded as not only one of the best games on the NES, but also one of the best games of all time. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.